We know how important it is to have the perfect hair and makeup for your wedding day. That's why we sat down with Ashton from Beautiful Brides to find out everything you need to know about your wedding hair and makeup. So some of the biggest problems brides have during the day with their hair and makeup would be, we can't control the weather, that is the only thing, so definitely making sure that we are using the right products for the day of. Really getting to know that client to make sure you know we know their hair and their skin type so that we're using the right products for that. So a lot of times the weather, if it's humid, hair can fall, it can drop. So maybe us suggesting that they go for an updo instead of going down because the curl will fall out more. So we definitely try to make a solution so that we, their style lasts from day to night. So some of the biggest problems would be there are a lot of companies out there. Um, so it's best to do your research. I definitely think um, checking out their websites, going through their social media platforms, just to kind of narrow it down to um, maybe a certain style or a certain um, look that you're going for, because we all kind of have our own uh, techniques that we use. Um, and narrowing it down and then inquiring with maybe like your top three companies um, because there are so many of us out there. It's uh, kind of hard, it can be overwhelming sometimes. So I definitely feel like with, I mean, social media could go either way. It's very helpful, but it also can be very, um, in the makeup and hair industry, it can be very overwhelming because they, we see these looks and people, they have this idea, right? And sometimes we have to try to, we tell them to just basically bring their best um, their most favorite inspirations and then we create that look cater it to their specific needs so it can be very overwhelming I definitely think uh, doing their own research they have to kind of do a little bit of work too so what are some mistakes that brides have made yeah. after the wedding I definitely this kind of comes into play of doing the research again I mean definitely looking for people that have experience in the wedding industry most of the girls that work for the team we all have 10 plus years experience so I definitely think that doing your research to find girls that have the expertise, the experience, because after they'll just kind of be like, oh, like I booked this new girl. I know cost comes into play a lot with hair and makeup. And so they went maybe with like a cheaper option, someone that doesn't have as much experience and their hair completely fell out. And you know, the products they use weren't um, either sweat proof or waterproof. So I definitely would hear that they say, you know, they did maybe like cheap out on their hair and makeup and um, it didn't last all day for them. That's definitely the, a key thing that I hear, is it didn't last all day. Are those mistakes avoidable? Yes, I definitely think they are by doing your research, again. <laughs> um, looking for people that have the experience in the industry. So on our website, we actually have like bios of all of our team, so you get to really know the girls. Um, you can even choose ones if you like before, so you could say, oh, like I love, really love Victoria's work, I'd like to work with her on my wedding day. And it gives you a bio of all the experience that Victoria has and how long she's been in the industry. How far in advance should brides book their hair and makeup? Right away. Uh, we book anywhere from a year to two years in advance. We don't take on too, too many weddings for one day. We'll do maybe two or three. Popular dates book up really fast. So I definitely um, kind of tell them once you've done your research and narrowed it down, it's best to kind of secure your date, you know, sign the contract, give your deposit, and uh, at least it's secured, right? Uh, we do get a lot of last minute inquiries, actually. Um, they'll go with another company. They weren't happy with the trial. They'll come back to us even after they've already inquired. I do think it's definitely good to go with a company that's kind of got a lot of experience and a lot of weddings under their belts because we try to make it as seamless and as smooth as possible for brides so that it's not stressful. It shouldn't be stressful, it's supposed to be fun. Hair and makeup is supposed to be fun, right? So uh, definitely we try to make it as easy as possible for them. When looking for a hairstylist and makeup artist for your wedding, definitely think doing your research and trying to find the companies that are, that they have staff working for them that are experienced and definitely can achieve the bride's desired look for her wedding day. It's such an important day, you waited for it for so long. You wanna look your best. You wanna know that you don't have to stress about your hair and makeup on your wedding day and that it's gonna last all day for you. Expectations for bridal hair and makeup, I definitely like to tell them to keep an open mind because Pinterest, uh, Instagram, um, unfortunately, a lot of people like to use filters and you know Photoshop, so please come with an open mind so that we can kind of recreate your own idea of that for you to cater you know, your look specifically. So it's great to come in with some inspo photos and then we'll kind of work off of that and create your most desired look. That's our number one goal is to create the bride's desired look to make sure she's happy and she still feels like herself on her wedding day. 
Why should a bride hire a hair and makeup company for her wedding day? We know the products and we have the skill and technique to create the look that's gonna last all day for you. Not everybody knows how to use certain products. I mean, we're layering, people always feel like we're layering and layering on product, but it's actually just the technique and the steps that we have to take to make sure the look is gonna last you from day to night. It's also important to, um, to have a unified look, I guess, because some people will either not do their hair or not do their makeup, and it does kind of show in photos, so you can kind of see like something might look a little out of place. So we do try to encourage everybody to get their hair and makeup done if they, if they can. Um, I know cost does play a factor, but it does, you can notice a difference. You don't think you can, but you can notice a difference. We suggest to book your trial um, about two months before your wedding day. If it needs to be booked earlier, that's fine, but it just keeps it fresh in your memory instead of booking it you know, six, seven months in advance. Um, you kind of forget what it looked like, so you kind of get an idea. We also suggest too, if you're doing like your engagement photos, that's a good time to do it, or your bridal shower, um, that's also a good time just to see how it wears throughout the day in photos because that's when you'll really notice it. You'll see the difference when you're looking at photos of, of yourself. How does the bride choose a hair and makeup style? Um, definitely social media aspects. We even suggest going on our own Instagram because you can see a lot of uh, the work that we do on there. Choose um, a style uh, that you'd be happy with for the day of. Um, and then um, a lot of brides use like Pinterest. Um, again, we say keep an open mind with that because you know sometimes they're coming, they have blonde hair and they're showing us a look with brown hair or vice versa. So we really try to specifically cater that look to the bride and her, um, you know, her desired look and what will work best with her hair and her um, skin types. The timeline for the wedding day, we base it off of their finish time basically. So we like to give about an hour per person, per service and we never do the bride at the very end or the very beginning. We kind of leave her middle so that it's still fresh um, and she's ready to go before um, kind of the madness happens. Uh, we, if we find we leave her till the end, you know, photographers arrive, things are getting a little busy, a little hectic. So we like to have her ready so that she's ready to go and to get dressed or if she needs to run off and do anything. So we like to leave her till the middle. It becomes more stressful when we leave the bride till the end. I mean, sometimes it does happen, but we try to at least have one or other thing done. Do brides pay for their bridal party or their own services? Bride usually pays for her own service and then bride, bridesmaids and bridal party uh, members will pay for their own services. Yeah, definitely like it's not, I have had brides ask me that, like should they pay for their own, uh, just their own services or pay for the whole bridal party? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously that's their decision, but I do suggest, you know, getting them to pay for their own hair and makeup. Maybe you could pay for their eyelashes or something as like a little treat for them, but definitely I think they should pay for, you know, a portion of it or if she wanted to pay for their hair service or something as a tree as part of their gift but I do always find it that the bridal party does pay for their own hair and makeup so should you tip your hair and makeup artist for your wedding day it's always appreciated you know you go to a salon and you tip your artist so I know it's a little bit different because we're coming to them so sometimes people kind of forget like oh they are still providing a service for us you know I do let them know gratuities aren't included in the fee and it is really up to them to you know, decide if they do want to. You know, it's always appreciated to know that you got a, you did a good job to receive something. But um, yeah, that is, that's a tricky question because we'll even get people to ask us there, like, oh, do we tip you? And I'm like, that's it's totally up to you. So how should you communicate with us for the desired look? Feel free to always um, send us looks. You could always email us if you like. A lot of times, though, um, for makeup, brides don't really have a vision. They either really do have their look nailed down or they don't. They have no idea. They're not sure. And I totally get it, it can be a confusing process because it's your wedding day and you wanna make sure you're having like the best look that also feels like yourself. So it can be a little confusing. I mean, but our number one goal is making sure that the bride is happy. Having a second trial is also always an option too because sometimes, you know, they do choose an updo and then they decide they want their hair down. So definitely communicating us with us through um, email or even social media, you know, sending us a picture that you saw of work that we liked. Even like beforehand to let us know is good too, but a lot of times brides just come up the day of and they're like, here's my photos, like this is kind of what I was, um, the vibe I was going for. How should you communicate with us if you don't have a vision? Yeah. This is when it really is, I find our job to nail down exactly what the bride is and isn't comfortable with. So if they come to me and they're like, you know what, I have no vision, just do your thing, you're the pro. This is when it's my job to ask her the question. So I ask, what don't you like? What don't you like? Do you not like eyeliner? Do you not like, um, you know, this color blush? So it's, we really have to cater to what she does like and what she doesn't like. So finding out what she's comfortable with and then going from there. Also asking kind of through the process, sort of um, going step by step, you know, are you comfortable? Do you like this? 
it's always easier for us to add products than take away. So kind of going through the steps with her to help her feel so comfortable and still feel like herself on her wedding day. A tip for a bride for if they don't usually wear makeup, that's kind of again when we would ask them sort of, you know, how comfortable you are. What kind of coverage do you like? If you like natural coverage, no problem. We'll give you something a little bit more sheer. It's really finding out and asking the client what she's comfortable with and really getting to know what she is gonna make her still feel her best. We do try to let them know, you know, we do have to do certain steps to make it look good for your wedding and your photos and make sure it's gonna last all day for you. We still have some steps that we don't like to skip, but definitely making sure that she's still gonna feel herself and feel, feel comfortable is really important to us. So um, just finding out, you know, all the key things that she will and will not make her happy. So definitely catering to her specific uh, needs and desired look for her wedding. We bring everything that you could possibly think of to achieve the look that we need to. We do have some clients though that are um, particular in certain products that they like or the way that they do things. So no problem. If somebody's like, please use this lipstick on me, we can do that for you. You know, I really like this foundation. I might break out. Um, can you use mine? No problem. We will do anything to make you happy and look and feel your best. That is our number one goal is that when you leave, you look and you feel, you know, you feel the best version of yourself. When you are looking to book your hair and makeup, um, don't take it lightly. Do your research for it because like I said again, we all have our own skills, our own style. You want to make sure that that person does have the experience and knowledge of knowing. We work brides every single weekend, you know, we have a hundred plus brides. Making sure we're using the correct products to know that the look is going to last all day for them.